What's up, Raging Nation? How's it going? This is Alex Yu, and you're watching The Road to TF5. This is just a web series where we're talking about Transformers 5. This is episode number 22. And this week, this very week, marks a very special moment for the production of the Transformers Cinematic Universe because this is when they officially start work on the writing process. Yesterday, Monday to be exact, is when Akiva Goldsman leads his team of writers to put their heads together in this writer's room that he has created. This team of writers will put their creative talents together to create the Transformers Cinematic Universe, much like the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but they are getting a much better head start because all the writers are being put together in this room so that they can make a very cohesive story. All right. So yesterday they started work and this is a very big thing because this marks the very early stage of this actual creation process. And this creation process is going to extend the story far beyond what Michael Bay has given to us. They're going to take inspiration from any part of the Transformers universe. For example, G1, Beast Wars, the Unicron Trilogy, Animated Prime, Robots in Disguise, the video games, and of course the comics. They can draw inspiration from anywhere and they're put together in this room surrounded with all kinds of inspiration and who knows what they will create. This is very, very exciting. Now, what's very interesting about this team of writers is that I'm pretty sure, and I'm just guessing though, that none of these writers are Transformers fans. Like they didn't watch the cartoons. Maybe they did. Maybe they watched some episodes, but they didn't. Uh, um, they, they are not like... The, the writing duo, uh, Alex Kurtzman and Roberta Ortsy, who we know are fans of the original source material. What they are instead are very talented writers, okay, who have put together some very, very, um, I guess, solid work. I mean, we have all kinds of writers in this team. And I'll mention their, their uh, most notable traits, and that is they have written for television, they have written for television series that are ongoing and very, very well received. They are writers for comic book movies and are also writers who are working on reboots and remakes. So you can kind of see where this is going, all right? You got reboots and remakes in there. You got TV writers that write for ongoing TV series and you also have comic book film writers. These are all things that are very, very popular in Hollywood today. Obviously comic book films are huge in Hollywood. They, as a matter of fact, make the most money in Hollywood. And of course TV series like The Walking Dead, like Daredevil, Spartacus, um, uh, what else is there? Game of Thrones. All these series are very very popular. And of course the ongoing trend, whether you like it or not, is of course reboots and remakes. Because, well, Hollywood is really out of ideas, officially. So this is the ongoing trend, this is what's going on, and because of that, Akiva Goldsman believes that the best idea is to put these heads together and then create the Transformers Cinematic Universe and have it be a one big cohesive story go on as if it were a TV series, perhaps. All right. Now, earlier I did mention that um, we have 12 writers, not including Akiva Goldsman. But the episode before that, in, in um, The Road to TF5, I mentioned that there are 11 writers, okay? But now there are 12. First, I'm going to mention, you, mention the writers to you, okay? Robert Kirkman, Art Markham and Matt Holloway, Jeff Pinkner, Zach Penn, Andrew Barr and Gabriel Ferrari, Christina Hodson, Lindsay Bear, Ken Nolan, Geneva Robertson, Dwarette, and now the 12th writer is Stephen DeKnight. Okay. Now, if that name sounds familiar, he is actually a writer for a Marvel property, and that would be a Marvel TV series. It's not Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., it's not... Um, uh, Agent Carter, it is um, Daredevil, a series that is very, very popular. A Netflix series that is not only very popular, but it is the most popular series on Netflix officially. Okay, he also previously created Spartacus, Smallville, Dollhouse, and Angel. When I say created, I mean that he wrote for those series. 
Okay, so you can see where his uh, background comes from, and that is uh, writing for TV. Sorry, okay. I seem to have lost my internet connection. Thank you, Siri. <laughs> all right, so you see where this is going, all right? And I think that they have a very solid team on board, all right? Now, this is a lot of writers, and I think a, a few people are quite concerned about this because uh, when you get a lot of writers, you get heads butting together. But here's the thing, all right? They're not here to work on one single story. They're here to work on several stories, several stories that are connected together, okay? And we aren't talking about 12 writers here. Uh, we got um, a, two pairs of writers that work together. Uh, so essentially, what we have here is 10 stories, okay? Um, the, the writing duels will work on a single story and, um, and the other individual writers are, are assumed to work on their own stories. So essentially, we have 10 films here that are all connected together. Now you're probably curious, just like how I'm curious, what are all these stories? What are they? Okay, because is it just gonna be Transformers 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12? No, uh, according to uh, uh, Hasbro CEO Brian Goldner, they are here in this writer's room to create um, a huge universe verse. that means us uh, character spin-offs and perhaps prequels and not just sequels. All right, there, there's uh, stories that extend beyond the, the current lineage. All right, so 10 writers, 10 stories. I'm just going to throw this out here. And perhaps we might get something going on, okay? And that is, we are going to get Transformers 5. Okay, this is on, in no particular order, okay? Transformers 5, Transformers 6, a Cybertron sequel called Transformers 1. Perhaps we're going to get the sequel to that Cybertron prequel. So let's just call it Transformers prequel number two, okay? Because it has to be some kind of huge story. It can't just be told all in one film, okay? I'm assuming we're probably gonna get a Beast Wars film because Beast Wars is something that's pretty uh, significant in the Transformers mythos in the grand scheme of things. And then we're gonna get a bunch of character spin-offs. And I think that the uh, it, that Hasbro and Paramount, they're going to be going towards the direction of having character spin-offs that fans recognize, okay, and not just and not particularly um, focusing on characters that are are I guess um, more more supporting roles. You know what I'm saying? So, for example, a Bumblebee character spin-off, okay, an Optimus Prime spin-off, maybe a film that's completely driven by Optimus Prime or a prequel film that talks about Optimus Prime before he landed on Earth, okay? A Megatron spin-off, perhaps. I think that people are curious how the live-action movie universe Megatron came to be, all right? There's a huge story behind that. I also think we're going to get a character spin-off for a team of Autobots, meaning an Autobot team, perhaps the Wreckers, okay? Maybe not, or perhaps a um, the aerial bots, or perhaps the Dinobots, or perhaps some um, um, a team like a, like an actual combiner team. All right, and that way it can expand with a team of characters that we've never seen before. And then I think we're gonna get another character spinoff that was a supporting role in any one of these films, and they're gonna expand upon that character just like they do in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You know how they have the Avengers, you know, f the film, right? The big film, right? Well, you know what? They can expand upon that and just make a film based on this character or this character or this character. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like the Star Wars anthology of films, how they want to create uh, like character spinoffs for the minor characters that we've only seen um, in a few uh, few small scenes here and there. For example, a Boba Fett um uh, backstory film, you know, that could very well happen. So that's what I'm thinking is going to happen. All right, let me just repeat that for you. Um, Transformers 5, Transformers 6, Cybertron prequel 1, Cybertron prequel 2, Beast Wars, character spinoff Bumblebee, character spinoff Optimus Prime, character spinoff Megatron, character spinoff Autobot Team, and character spinoff New Character. All right, those are your 10 films that I am just guessing that are going to happen. And it seems like it could happen because when you really 
do the math, when you really put everything together in the, in, in the grand scheme of things, all they can really do strategically in a very, uh, uh, like, I guess, strategic marketing fashion is that is only introduce characters that you see in a previous film as opposed to introducing a brand new character which will have fans scratching your heads like, who is this? So the best thing to do is expand upon characters that we already know about, all right? And of course, I think uh, a, a character spin-off, a film like Bumblebee, as much as some fans are tired of seeing Bumblebee, it will do very well with the kids because a lot of the kids love Bumblebee, all right? And you know what? They're here to create films that work. And by work, I mean films that make money. Lots of it, all right? Essentially, they're here to sell merchandising. Transformers as a brand is a huge marketing tool. All right, like it's it's a marketing tool within itself. The cartoons were there to sell toys. The live action films were that are there to create even more merchandising and of course make big box office bucks. All right, so that is what I'm thinking is going to happen. They have a very solid team of writers. It's a large team of writers, and this is when they officially start actual pre production for Transformers: The Cinematic Universe. It's very, very exciting. And you know what? This could be a very, very long process. But we will start getting our announcements later on this year, perhaps in September, when we find out who is going to be directing these films. It might take a while to find out who's going to be directing all of these films, but at least they have all the writers working together in one room where they can just... You know what? Just just lay it all out there. Lay out a timeline uh, about when these films occur. And then eventually, they can have a big event. Maybe perhaps at BotCon, where they announce, just like how Kevin Feige announced his big plans for, for uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe Phase 3. Perhaps Hasbro CEO Brian Goldner and Akiva Goldsman and Steven Spielberg and Lorenzo de Bonaventura, they will be there at BotCon to announce their plans for their Transformers Cinematic Universe. I'm just throwing this out there. It could happen, okay? But it looks like this is going to happen from this point on, okay? So there you have it. That's all I got to say in this video. We have a lot of films that we are going to be getting. Essentially, we are getting one film per year starting from 2017, which is two years from now. Exactly two years from now because if... My prediction is correct. They were, they're were they most likely going to have Transformers 5 at the end of June, just like they've had every other previous Transformers live-action installment. Okay, So exactly two years from now, we are getting Transformers 5, and then after that, every year, we're going to get another Transformers film, which is super, super exciting. Some fans might think that's too much, but take a look at Marvel. We get two to three films. Maybe two to four films, depending on which studio is putting them out there. But that's a lot of comic book character films in a single year. So don't say that <laughs> that's too many Transformers films, okay? I don't need a break. I just want to see quality stories, okay? And there you have it. That's all I got to say in this video. Oh yeah, by the way, before I go, I just want to say that uh, if you want to get yourself a Rage Nation t-shirt, there are still some available. I know I'm sold out of uh, some sizes. So, like for example, I'm sold out of smalls. I do have a couple of mediums left and then uh, there's a large, extra large and extra, extra large. And um, I also have a special promotional price if you decide you want to get the t-shirt, the VIP Rage Nation all access badge, and then I throw in a Rage Nation FTW slap bracelet in just because you're awesome and I appreciate the support. So the links to purchase those items are on the description box below and uh, I appreciate it uh, for all the support. All right, there you have it. My name is Alex Yu, thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, hit the like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like me on Facebook, The Raging Nation, also follow me on Twitter at Raging Nation. My name is Alex Yu, thanks for watching and now you have your 10 writers led, 10 writers led by Akiva Goldsman. They are going to start writing an awesome Transformers story, a grand story for us. I'll see you next time, peace. Now check this out, we're not done with this writer's room, okay? We have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 